QuickBooks Online 2022. Increase screen size and toggle. Get ready because it's go time with QuickBooks Online 2022. Here we are online in our browser. We're going to be searching for QuickBooks Online test drive so we can get that free test drive file that we can use to practice navigation with. Here is the item down below. So that's the one I'm going to use. It's going to have a verification item saying I'm not a robot. So we're going to say, okay, I'm not a robot. Also note that it will typically have Intuit in it up top. Remember that Intuit is the owner of QuickBooks. We're going to say continue here, taking us into the test drive file. And here we are. I'm also going to be opening up the 30 day test drive file just so you can compare and contrast the, the most up to date uh, look and feel of it. So here's the 30 day test drive. It doesn't have any information in it, but you have a little bit different in terms of the icons on the left hand side. What we want to do now is practice basically the increasing of the screen size and then the navigation features. To do this, I'm going to be comparing and contrasting to the desktop version and talking about just basically desktop in general software versus online software and the differences between navigation in it. And if you've worked in the desktop software, you might say, hey, I would like, I really like to use these types of things to get around the software and I can't do that as much or there's different ways to do it online that you just basically have to get used to. One issue people often has is to increase or decrease the screen size. To increase or decrease the screen size on a desktop type of software with QuickBooks Desktop, for example, if you want to make these icons a little bit larger, you actually had to go into your display settings in the computer and increase the display setting size of it to increase the size within the software. However, in the online version, you have some more capacity to just basically increase the size because it's a website type of application you could do that either here this is in our uh, new company file or in the test file over here because it's a web-based program and you could simply if you're in a windows based computer hold down control and scroll up you can resize the screen i can hit the resize here and increase the screen size so 100 percent of the screen size is kind of what the optimal design would be that's how i would think about it the web page was designed to be shown optimally at the 100%. If you increase the screen size, then of course you're going to you're going to take it out of what its optimal shape is. The interplay between a website, however, allows the screen size to kind of adopt and change as you increase the size. So there's pros and cons to that, however, and we can also do that over here. So if you're if you want to see this look and feel just to Go back and forth between the two looks and feels here. Same thing. It's a web page. I can I can hold down control and scroll up. Or if I want to see more stuff, I can hold down control and scroll down. And then I can increase or decrease the screen size. That's great for people that, that want to see it typically bigger <laughs> screen size to see the information a little bit more clearly oftentimes. But again, it also has its downfalls. One of them is that if you're dealing with someone and you're trying to compare what you're doing to compare to what someone else is doing, then if you have different screen sizes, because the web page will optimize for that screen size, you'll be looking at something that will be slightly different depending on how high the, the size of the screen is. That's why the, the website is able in part to display something on a phone, which has a much different dimensions than it does say on a large uh, computer screen where the optimization of the look and feel of it will differ also if you're doing data input if you're entering things like forms into the system so if i was to go over here and enter my transactions like invoices and uh, the receive payments and so on these things uh, could get distorted with regards to the data input if you're zoomed in too far and uh, the fix of that would then be to close everything out go back to 100 percent and enter the data in at 100%. So in other words, zooming in the screen when you're actually doing data input can distort the forms to a degree sometimes where the actual data input is going to have a problem with it and you got to basically stop what you're doing and resize the screen to 100% so that you can re-input the, the data. So that can be a little bit frustrating as well. But in general, the idea of just being able to hold control down and zoom in is a great is a great thing. On the desktop version, note, that when you run reports, for example, the reports are usually what, what look quite small. You could say, hey, I'd like the font to be a little bit larger. The desktop version actually has the component, if I was to customize the reports up top to change the fonts and number size. So they have a little bit more capacity 
on the desktop version for this kind of formatting of the reports. And I can increase the font size like this. And so I can increase the thing that's probably the most difficult to read the report size in the screen by just changing in essence the font size which is nice you don't have as much capacity in the online version to adjust the report so if i was to go into a report for example over here and say we've got our report and this is the one that has data in it so we're this is our test drive file already has data if i if i went into my balance sheet report then i don't have as much capacity to basically you know change the font size or the colors and this and that but i can hold down control and zoom into the report i can also close the hamburger on the left hand side and zoom in so i could get a, a nice huge view so that zoom feature works really well with the reports doesn't work quite so well with the data input however because the data input uh, it could distort the data input now the next thing that you might be used to is saying hey look i want to see multiple things at one time i want to have my report open and I want to be op entering something else into the system. When you have the desktop version, if you're used to the desktop version, you might be used to using this window on the left-hand side, which is open windows. You might also be used to using multiple screens. So you can actually widen this to have two screens if you're used to that as well, so that you can see it on two actual screens. To see this, you go into the view dropdown and say you want to see the view windows, and that allows you to what we call toggle between say the reports and the home page or say to the reports and then you're opening an invoice and you want to do data input into the invoice and you want to be able to see the actual reports so you could toggle back and forth between them the invoice and the actual forms if you're on an online setup uh, it doesn't have that same kind of setup if i hit the the hamburger is as they call it on the left hand side i can then go into my options over here but i don't have that open windows type of thing the way to get that seems a, it's a little bit more difficult to get used to but what you do is you go up top and you say i'm going to right click on this item up top and duplicate the screen so i want to duplicate this tab and that will give you another window that is going to be open that will be holding on to that same data that you had in the prior window so now i've got it listed over here and i can go back to my prior tab and I can do my data input. I can go to my forms and go to my invoice over here while I still have my other window open. So this is this is a nice tool. You gotta be careful with this tool, however, as well to make sure that both of these two tabs are refreshing every time you enter something new. So if I enter an invoice over here and I go back to this tab, I wanna make sure it's refreshed. It's added the data by possibly refreshing the screen over here is one way that I could just make sure that it's picking up the new data that has that has been populated so if you're used to the desktop version it take a little bit of time to to basically write you can have multiple windows open i can right click and duplicate uh, this tab and i can have multiple tabs open up top and that's how i want to scroll around and then you can move these tabs one to the other so in future presentations i'll start to open the balance sheet the income statement the trial balance i'll start to get in a system i'm going to say i'm going to duplicate duplicate the tab where I'm going to I'm going to have my setup where I typically like to have it say have my balance sheet first and then followed by my income statement so I might then open my second report over here which would be what did I have over here the balance sheet and then I might have my profit and loss or income statement and then possibly use the first tab as my data input where I'm entering the invoices and so on and so forth you also got to be careful in terms of your toggling like if I scroll to 100% here and go back over here notice this also modifies back down to 100 percent so it could be a, it could be a little bit tricky you might say hey i would like to have this thing up at 120 percent but my other my other item at 100 percent that could be a, a little bit uh tricky to do if you're using the same browser you could possibly open the same item in different browsers and do that you can also take this tab and grab it like this and then drag it somewhere else so if i wanted to see something side by side I could see this now side by side uh, with my with my other items over here by now having two separate browser windows that are open down here so now i've got my two browsers so usually when you duplicate the tab it's in the same little column up top but you can pull it out of that column just like we did here and i could i could possibly put it back into that column as well i'm just going to close it so i'm going to grab so i can grab i can grab one of these and pull it pull it out so now it's its own thing and then typically you should be able to put it back 
right there if you want to as well. These things, if you're not used to this and you're used to a desktop version, that'll take a while to get used to. But once you get used to it, it's pretty nice and you can do some things that you can't do on the desktop version when you're navigating around like that. And again, the same thing if you're used to this you look and feel, same thing. I can, I can open up my reports over here, which would be in the reports, and there's nothing in this tab. I can open up my balance sheet and say say I want to run I want to run this and then possibly duplicate this tab duplicate the tab now I have it over here and then I can go back to my left hand side to do what I want to do with regards to the data input go into the business overview for example or to the, let's go and go to my little plus button and enter an invoice on this side whilst I have my my data on on the right in terms of the rubber so now I've got my data input field and on the right, I've got my tab here. And, I, and again, I could grab this and pull it so I can put it on another screen if I want to, so that I could have two screens open. I can do the good old side by side view. So you got a lot of uh, flexibility with regards to the side by side look. So there we have that. And, and then you should be able to basically put this back right there. So we can then, we can have a lot of flexibility in terms of moving this stuff around. And again, you can move these up top to put the order up top that you like. And after you do this for a while, you probably get used to saying, hey, this may be like the first one is where I like my data input. And then maybe my reports, balance sheet, income statement, trial balance up top. You have some kind of system that you'll probably get used to. And we'll get into some kind of system, some kind of groove when we start to opening our files as we go forward with the practice files. It takes a little bit, a little bit of time to get used to, however. And of course, how many windows you have open will be dependent on your internet connection. So if your connection's a little bit slow, then it could be a little bit frustrating to have everything updated and refreshed if you've got a, a good, uh, fast internet connection. And uh, then this this kind of method could, could work quite well. It's actually kind of nice and it has some uh, things that you can't do as easily with the desktop version.